and welcome to another camera review. This is Paul Moreira and today we shall have a look at the Olympus OM2N, a camera that I have in my collection. I already made a video about the OM1 camera, which was a milestone when it was launched back in 1972. It amazed the world with its small size, high performance and a totally new approach when it comes to ergonomics. Still, in the mechanical department it, qua it was quite a conventional camera. The Olympus OM2 that followed in 1974 was, or better still, used basically the same body, but it did without the uh, mechanical bits and they were replaced by electronics. So the OM2 is an electronic camera featuring aperture priority. Well, my camera here is the OM2N, which is an improved version of the original OM2. But, but they are very similar. So when I say OM2, uh, I mean OM2N and OM2 for me, they are the same. As you may have noticed, the camera is remarkably uh, handsome. All in black, this is what I wanted. A camera that, with the white lettering and all, is really a killer. I go weak <laughs> in my knees whenever I look at it, it is really a wonderfully designed piece of machinery. I don't know if you have watched the previous video about the Olympus OM-1, and so it has some quirks in terms of ergonomics, because it follows the famous, uh, which, which I call uh, three-function axis uh, that a camera has, meaning that with your uh, left hand you control the aperture, you focus and you also have the shutter speed ring here around the lens bayonet to command the shutter speeds. Here it is an electronic camera. It follows the same disposition in terms of ergonomics as the OM-1 but the um, use of the shutter speed ring is less uh, fundamental because this camera was thought out from the beginning to be used as mainly as an auto camera. So if you don't like the ring, as I don't like myself, again, if you only use Olympus cameras, then you get used to it and it, it comes naturally. But if you change cameras, uh, then it becomes a bit uh, of an obstacle. Here, uh, no, because you don't have to come here when you want to use the camera in auto mode, not even to change modes, as we shall see. Another, this time it's a difference uh, regarding the OM-1, there is no provision for mirror lockup. In the OM-1, you have here a switch that locks up the mirror, which is has its advantages for micro photography, for instance, uh, since it reduces the shutter vibrations. Admittedly, this camera has a shutter with very low, a very low level of shutter vibration and noise. It's a wonderful shutter, as you shall hear in a minute. Another difference with the OM-1 is this knob, also present in the OM-1, but here it has a double function. So, it's a way to set your ASA to inform the meter of the type of film that you are using and it, is, it acts also as an exposure, exposure compensation. Another difference is in the hot shoe, although they look similar. The hot shoe on these cameras is removable and I think it was because Mr. Maitani wanted to preserve this wonderful shape, triangular shape of the prism and that is a bit reminiscent of the, Olymp of the uh, Pentax Spotmatic and for me it's really, it is something, it's absolutely gorgeous. And so he decided to have 
it's not a new idea, but um, he decided then to have a removable hot shoe. The uh, novelty here is that it features TTL flash, which was really big news. And since then, it's impossible to find um, a camera that does not use TTL flash as uh, a reading for flash balance and flash exposure. Here, it seems very OM1, yet this famous switch that is replicated in today's Olympus DSLRs it has become a sort of symbol with the OM series because it's so simply designed it's wonderfully simple and so effective that um, it became almost a synonym of Olympus OM cameras. Again, here it has four functions instead of just uh, two in the OM-1. So let's start by the top. I don't know if you can see there is under the OM-2N name, there is written check and reset. Check is battery, battery check. It is essential because this is an electronic camera that uses batteries and has no backup from uh, any mechanical speeds from the shutter. So the shutter does not have any mechanical SOS speeds like the Nikons and some other brands. So no batteries, no camera. The reset, you might wonder why, uh, simply because when there isn't enough charge or sometimes these cameras lock the mirror up perhaps because of that because the charge the battery charge is low and so you have to unblock the or unlock the mirror that normally um, sticks to the upper position then you come here and you see the word lock b so in order to access to the b speed which is in red this is also in red you have to depress this button put the camera into b and then push the switch up and the camera is free the mirror theoretically will be free if it isn't then something is wrong with your camera here we've got the off position this is for the meter because the meter is not uh, does not feature uh, an auto power uh, option so you have to uh, disengage the meter here manually. If you forget you might have trouble with uh, battery life. One of the issues of the Olympus OM2 originally was exactly that. The batteries didn't last very long because the camera suffered from some sort of battery drainage. In the OM2N apparently uh, it was one of the issues that Olympus solved. That and the tendency to lock the mirror up uh, sometimes without explanation. In this model everything seems to uh, be working just fine. Another position is manual and as the name indicates manual is manual. You take care of the exposure so you set the aperture and the speeds. There is the meter to help you but it's the normal manual mode of the Olympus OM-1. Now, the best thing is something that, unfortunately, I cannot show it to you. It, uh, it is something of a magic that happens inside this viewfinder. When the camera is in auto, the viewfinder changes the display. And on the left side, there is a scale with a needle with all the standardized speeds. And so the camera will indicate the shutter speed that it will fire. Uh, indicating to the user that you are in auto mode. Also, if you choose to correct exposure, there is a symbol that appears under that scale. But, unlike other cameras, when, when you switch to manual, nothing really changes in the viewfinder. Sometimes an M appears, but here the viewfinder changes its layout. And gone is that scale with the speeds in comes another indication with just a plus a minus just like in the Olympus OM-1 typical of manual exposure cameras 
So this camera tries to emulate the spirit of an old mechanical manual camera by switching the layouts of the viewfinder. I find this really remarkable. It's the only camera that I know of that um, makes uh, this um, thing of changing the viewfinder just to let you have this feeling of uh, shooting with an auto or a manual camera. Truly remarkable. And of course I cannot uh, tell you how much I love this viewfinder. You can see that the prism is really small, yet coverage, image coverage is a respectable 97%, which also to me seems like a miracle because it's so small. And it is bright, it is big of course, very bright, so if you have any problems with focusing with an Olympus OM-1 or 2, but in this case the 2, you really should cons consider visiting your doctor. The, the viewfinder is truly amazing, especially taking into consideration that this camera is uh, 40 years old. Coming to the bottom of the camera, we have provision for a motor drive, and that is indicated here on this side, MD motor drive. Here it's the battery chamber. The camera takes two batteries, uh, LR44 1.5 volts, two of them, so they are readily available. No mercury batteries like the OM1, so no need for adapters, no need for headaches. The camera is ready to use. In terms of finish, it is very well finished and you can see that it sports, well, a conservative horizontally run shutter in cloth, but it is quite silent and vibration free as far as SLRs go, so uh, we can pardon Olympus for this. What else do we have here in front of us? We have the self-timer that acts as a self-timer. It's the same as in the Olympus OM-1, except that it is all black. This is the um, button or rocket switch to free the tip of the film in order to rewind and this is exactly like the OM-1 provision for to work with flash or bulb and it seems that I have nothing more to say about the Olympus OM-2 is that it? No the best is yet to come as you may have noticed I really like um, the camera it's um, a fantastic little camera, just like the OM-1, plus it is automated and it was thought out from the beginning to be used as an automated camera. I'm sorry people, but um, I really conclude, my conclusions are that Olympus thought of this one to be used by guys like me who like aperture priority cameras. This camera, let's remember that it it was 1974, has an original metering system. Not um, in the sense of metering, of um, matrix or spot metering, no. It's the way it collects information or the way it reads the light. And normally cameras have metering cells here in the prism and they give you a reading that is reflected from the mirror. Some of them have a cell inside or um, behind the mirror. But the Olympus went a bit further. And so the OM2 has, and let me open the shutter for you, has these two blue eyes looking, staring at you. And those two blue eyes are indeed the cells that read the light hitting the film play. One of the advantages of this system is that it is located in a place where stray light cannot influence the reading. In a camera that has the metering cells here, 
Sometimes we'll find a shutter blind here to prevent stray rays from coming and disturbing the readings because stray light can enter and thus giving a wrong reading. Here, no such thing. So the cells are facing the film. And now I'm doing something that you should not do, but this is my camera, so I'm quite okay with it. I'm going to lift the mirror and show you this curtain with this strange pattern that to me and you means nothing, but it seems to say a lot to the metering cells. So this camera uses a metering system called OTF of the film because these cells read directly on the film. So supposedly they are more accurate. The camera is also capable of very long exposures. Um, normally people say it's two minutes, but some cameras are known to be capable of um, longer exposures. So the Olympus OM-2 was sensational at that time because of that capability. So the camera, let's um, say this in a different way, reads from the film plane directly the light uh, that hits the film plane and it's continuously computing and analyzing and when the light is enough it turns off the shutter. This is closes the shutter. So it's not like the other cameras that um, calculate exposure for you and if the light conditions change the uh, exposure will not change because they have locked the exposure. They are unable to uh, correct exposure. Even today most digital cameras are unable to correct exposure after being set. But there is another, another quirk. I said that the camera had these two metering cells and I uh, was not lying, but it still has two metering cells here on top of the camera. So it makes four. And you might ask me, Paul, why the hell does it, the OM2 need another pair of cells or reading cells on the prism, since you said that the ones at the bottom, the silicon blue cells, are there in order to avoid the problems that we have seen. Well, you see, these cells are for you and me. They are dummy cells. They are of no use to the camera. They are there just to indicate you, to you and me, the exposure. So these cells are for the user only. They are not connected to the cells at the bottom. So the readings that appear on top may not coincide with the actual shutter speeds that the camera may choose. These cells are not connected to the top part of the camera. They are connected to the electronic brain of the camera. So these cells are dummy cells, like I normally call them. They are cells for human consumption, not for the camera. So don't... Some people think the camera is broken because when they look through the viewfinder, a certain shutter speed is shown and when firing the shutter, a different shutter speed is, is um, made. By sound, we can identify it that it was not one thirtieth of a second, for instance. And that's the reason. These cells meet uh, the subject classically. These ones are the ones that matter, are the ones that the camera use, uses actually to make exposure. So don't feel too offended. So the Olympus OM2 uh, engineers uh, treat the uh, users as a, with a certain disdain, uh, but it is for a good cause because no one wanted to have a camera without at least having a notion, um, an idea of what speed it will, uh, it would fire, and so they're there for that reason. There is a catch in all this still. During a long exposure, a phenomenon can occur because this camera is not capable of long exposures in manual mode. Some cameras are, but this one isn't, so it stops at one second. If you want more, you either use B or you have to resort to D. 
the automatic mode, which is aperture priority, and then the camera can have the shutter open for a few minutes. But the catch is, imagine that I want to take a picture of this room. So this, is, this room is badly lit. And let's see what happens. I have no idea of the shutter speed is because I'm not looking through the viewfinder. But with the camera off, it's always the same. Well, you heard it. So let's close the diaphragm a bit so that the shutter speed is slower. Okay. So uh, what happens during these seconds is that the cells are metering the light that hits the film and when enough light has hit the film, the shutter closes. Now, if I turn the camera to the light, as you saw, exposure was dramatically uh, reduced. Why? Because those cells are continuously adjusting to the light. Now it gives the full, I don't know how many seconds, but as soon as I turn it to the light, you see, the shutter closes. The catch is, this camera cannot be trusted to take pictures <laughs> by night, uh, long exposures, because if a light passes through um, in front of the camera, like uh, a car, uh, if you're doing astronomy, if, you are, um, if a plane passes by, then the camera will automatically um, close the shutter. So this is an uh, disadvantage of the, uh, I would say, real-time <laughs> metering. This is uh, an acronym of Yashik and Contacts, but um, in fact, this is what it's all about. The camera is continuously reading. So when enough light has hit the shutter, um, it corrects the exposure. So um, be very careful and don't be disappointed with results, uh, long exposure results, if the camera suddenly stops um, during a long exposure. It stopped because something happened or make, made it believe that enough light had already hit the film. So it's a particular characteristic. This does not happen with um, fast shutter speeds because simply there isn't enough time for the camera to uh, react. But uh, with slow shutter speeds, yes. So uh, the shutter speed that it is indicated here can be much longer or much quicker here. And so be very always a bit wary of what the camera indicates. It's not a problem and it's, there isn't a huge discrepancy between this and what actually uh, the cells are metering. Um, and you have to know that um, you have to trust the camera and we can trust the Olympus OM2 and, or OM2 when it comes to exposure, at least with this one. One final word, another clever thing that I forgot to mention about Olympus uh, while we are uh, speaking about auto exposure is that unlike other cameras that you have to resort to the shutter speed ring to put the camera in auto with the OM2, OM2N, when you slide this switch to auto, immediately this shutter speed ring is disabled, so you can leave it in whatever speed you want, except B, but it won't engage without you depressing a button first. So automatically this dial is disengaged and the camera will ignore any speed that you have previously chosen. The same happens manually. So the camera will disable the automatic system and automatically the speed that is considered is the one that you have selected in the shutter speed ring. This is so childishly simple that one wonders why the others had to have a position with A, uh, 
so that makes things slow. Plus they have A, A, E, P, S, and stuff like that. And you take a lot of time reaching for your uh, speed, shutter speed. Not the case here. Again, very simple, very simple idea. Um, I don't know if it is difficult to implement in the camera or, or if it was um, difficult. But one of the things that I like uh, about Olympus is that they have these little details that are pure genius. Mr. Maitani, uh, if it was him, really was a genius of a person because he thought of details that escaped most of the people. Another detail of um, genius and uh, ingenuity of whatever you want to call it, wit, engineering, wit, whatever, is the fact that this camera changes the screen, the focusing screen. This per se is not a remarkable thing since the prism is fixed, but the way that Olympus has made it, uh, the method, the process to change the screen is so easy that one wonders why all cameras aren't fitted with interchangeable screens since this is so easy. No tools are need, needed. You just press a little tab, the frame of the screen comes down, the screen comes down with it, it doesn't budge, it, was, it really doesn't fall out of the camera, it stays there safely, just have to uh, use a pair of tweezers, take it out, replace it and put it back into place. It's as simple as that, you just have to be careful not to put your finger into the screen. This is so simple that it, most child, most children can do this. It's amazing. Um, these details are truly amazing in OM cameras. They are very simple to use, no matter how complex they might be inside. For the user, they just seem plain simple. And this is the reason why I love the Olympus OM2 so much. Like I told you, I really love the OM1, but this is more my type of camera, since I do like um, aperture priority cameras. I do like very small cameras. This one fits the build perfectly. And it is so sweet. It makes a uh, little noise. It might seem more than it actually is because this room is well it amplifies the sounds but it is really a sweet shutter for an SLR I really lo love this yeah, if I turn the meter on the camera on you will listen to different speeds so the advanced system doesn't feel that robust, it is the same as the DOM1, but these cameras are not terribly problem prone because of that. So, I hope uh, I've given you a fair idea of what I think about the Olympus OM2, in this case my OM2N. Um, it's a camera that 40 years on, it's so modern, it's a delight to use. Should you buy one? I don't know, it's up to you. I really like them and um, it for me it's one of um, those cameras that um, revolutionized photography. Uh, the OM1 did it but more because of its size and ergonomics. This one because of its exposure system um, and combined with some trickery that the OM1 also has. So perhaps this one has aged uh, in a different, at a slower rate, since it has TTL, flash reading, etc, etc. So it's more modern than the Olympus OM1. Anyway, they are remarkable cameras. I hope you have enjoyed meeting my Olympus OM2N and join me for my next video.
Again, I would like to um, ask you if you have any doubts or questions about cameras, this one or others, um, please don't send me messages through this uh, channel because somehow I don't get them, I don't know why. So please send them to the email address that I will provide at the bottom uh, of the video. Uh, I will be delighted to help you in any way that I can. Thank you and see you very soon then.